way that they subjugated it and make it just their little slave colony. Um, you have the, uh, uh, it, it, here in the United States, what's the Confederacy? What is it? It's just a bunch of crackers who don't like black people or something? No, absolutely not. It's part of the global British imperial system. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. What is the system? Well, the Brits have slave labor in London. You know, everybody knows Charles Dickens and the child labor and the women labor and all that kind of stuff. They produce massive amounts of cheap textiles. Where does it go? It goes to India. How do the Indians pay, right? Opium. opium. They grow opium. Where does the opium go? It goes to China. They get gold or silver from the Chinese for the opium. So it, it and where does 95% of the raw cotton that goes into this whole system come from? The South. Wow. The southern states, the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's what the whole thing is part of. And so obviously, as part of their global rampage, they're going to bust this place up. No more internal improvements, no more governments directing credit outside of the Bank of England and the Empire to, you know, for your damn progress and all this other kind of stuff. And that's really the backdrop of what begins the War of Insurrection. Um, now I just want to say a, a couple things about Lincoln, because Abraham Lincoln defines what it means to be a commander-in-chief. You know, Washington was president, but he wasn't president during the war. <laughs> but, hey, Madison was president during the war, but he kind of ran away. Well, Washington <laughs> was commander-in-chief, and then he was president. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, well, no, he was... <laughs> anyway, commander in chief meaning the president. Right, right, right. States, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. And now here's a question for everybody. What's Lincoln's military experience? Zero. 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 Oh, yeah, he fought mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> he went through it. Yeah. Right. But anyway, it's basically zero. Yeah, yeah, some militia training. What about Jeff Davis? West Point. West Point. West Point. Yeah. War hero. Top of the club. Right? He, you know, Mexican Secretary of, uh, of the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, War Secretary, whatever. Yeah, Secretary of War. That's right. Right. Um, so that's interesting. So what does Lincoln do when the war starts? Now, I want to just reference one thing in terms of who Lincoln is. Because very early on, 25 years earlier, Lincoln sees all this happening. Very conscious of it. Mm. And he's, he says, my God, if this keeps going this way, we're going to lose this whole great experiment. And he gives a speech, which some of you may have read in 1836, in front of a group called the Young Men's Lyceum, on the idea of perpetuating the institutions of our republic. And I, and I do have to just read the end of it, because it gives you an idea of what he, how he's thinking about the rest of his life. Because he's talking about the fact that the, those that fought in the revolution, they're gone. They're not here anymore. Uh, he said, they were a forest of giant oaks, but the all-restless hurricane has swept over them and left only here and there a lonely trunk, despoiled of its verdure, shorn of its foliage, unshading and unshaded to murmur in a few gentle breezes and to combat with its mutilated limbs a few more ruder storms than to sink and be no more. They were the pillars of the Temple of Liberty, and now they have crumbled away. That temple must fall unless we, their descendants, supply their places with other pillars, hewn from the solid quarry of sober reason. Passion has helped us, but can do so no more. It will be the future our enemy. Very mm. interesting, right? Reason, cold, calculating, unimpassioned reason, must furnish all the materials for our future support and defense. Let those materials be molded into a general intelligence, sound morality, and a particular reverence for the Constitution and its laws. And that we improve to the last, that we remain free to the last. Uh, and that during his long sleep, we permitted no hostile foot to pass over or desecrate, he's talking about Washington, uh, Washington's resting place. Upon these, let the proud fabric of freedom rest as the rock of its basis, and as truly as has been said of only of the only great institution, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So that's his life. He's laid out his mission. That's what he's going to do. 
And whatever has to be done to make that happen, to preserve those institutions and perpetuate it, he's going to do. And he ends up, of course, being the president. Now, when the war breaks out, what does he do? He reads everything on, on military science, everything. And he has a complete hands-on control, which thank God he did, because some of these generals were just nincompoops. <laughs> um, so now I just say a couple things about the Confederacy, because, you, you know, you have to think. I mean, this is, to those that were like in the middle of all this, in the North, this is what's animating them. This is a higher mission for mankind. This is not just some, you know, I'm fighting for my, my hearth and home or something. But you have to ask yourself, what's the mission of the Confederates, you know, of the Army of North Virginia, of the Confederate States of America, their army? What's, what's their mission? Anybody, what's their mission? Our, their way, of our, life. our way of life. Our way of life. Saving their way of life, wherever you may be from. Right. They're rats. They're rats. <laughs> They're rats. They're a legionary force of the British. <laughs> They're rats. 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 They were legionaries to an empire, basically. I mean, not exactly yeah. a higher idea. And I'm bringing mm. this up now mm -hmm. because the theme that you'll see throughout the day mm. is something that the Prussians later called Aufstragtakti, mm. which is, is a military term meaning mission orientation. That is, it, it, that the subordinate commanders are so thoroughly kind of animated by the mission as a whole that without direct orders, go to point A, and then you're going to go to point B, and then you're going to go to point C, they're able to do these, carry out these tactics on their own. With no cell phones, I have yeah, to no say. No GPS. <laughs> no, no it's a big deal. Well, it we was have really that. Big talk about that. Good, one. yeah. It's created Let's real that, complications. Right? But you have to think about Google this. That. Because yeah. you, do, you see the uh, Alpstrad tactic on the field here on the northern side. You, you don't really see it in any way that's substantial on the Confederate mm -hmm. side. In fact, you see quite the opposite, mm -hmm. as we'll see, right? Mm -hmm. um, so here's the, what, what now. Historic